Yo, what's up, peoples? Uh, haven't done a video in a while. I figured I'd do it on this one. Uh, I just got a question from a Danny011189, and uh, he wants to know, um, is being precise when you set the warp markers or track to the metronome difficult, the difficult bit, or is it getting your head around the tools? What's the more important, what's more difficult and what's more important? Uh, I think what he's, is what he's really asking. And so I figured I'd make a video on that. Um, basically, um, what I, the way I approach Ableton um, is it's, it's, it's kind of exploratory. I mean, when I find something that works, I kind of, kind of experiment with that for a very long time until, you know, I, I need to do something else and then I'll, you know, I, I'll probably consult the community, check out a YouTube video, and then uh, experiment with it. Um, one of the cool things about Ableton is it allows you to, um, it's got a little help box down in the bottom left-hand corner, and that can kind of help you out with the tools part um, as far as that goes. But as far as warping and, and that's concerned, uh, what I'd like to do is I'm going to uh, turn on my metronome and I'm going to play a song from uh, my library. It's by a guy named Avishai Cohen. And uh, the name of the song is Pins and Kinzin. That's P-I-N-Z-I-N-K-I-N-Z-I-N. And um, the reason why I picked this is it's very syncopated and it's one of the harder songs to track. So I just want you guys to hear how that song plays out uh, with the metronome playing. So here's the metronome. And then I'll just start that. So as you can see, that's pretty much, it's a very, very, very good song. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is we're going to come over here and um, first I'll turn off my metronome. There we go. And then I'm just going to open it up and show you what I'm doing here. Now, um, we started out with one marker and that usually falls very close on the first transient. And um, what I like to do with this, because it's so syncopated, sometimes Ableton has a little bit of trouble because there's so much going on. So what I like to do is I like to find the one, the very, very hard downbeat, um, and then just let, you know, make sure that locks to the number of bars and then let everything out just kind of lay elastically and that's one of the cool things about Ableton is just allows you to mark what you need to mark move it and everything moves in relation if it's not highlighted with these markers right here so if I play it from <laughs> And so that allows you to um, basically just, it's almost like pinning a patch before you sew it. It just allows you to keep the markers in place, let the song kind of play out just to see how you can uh, see where things lay. And then once you get a good idea of that, then you can start delving into it and getting into the nitty gritty of it. Um, uh, once you, once you uh, get everything into place though the way you want it then you consolidate of course and i've got another video about consolidation and all that get it to the beat you want and then you slice it to a new midi track and then once you have it sliced to a new midi track you know you it still kind of falls in funny ways and it depends on how many markers you put down and how specific you want it to sound but if you allow, if you add a little bit of artistic creativity, if you start, if you play it across a keyboard, uh, you can kind of make up for those tiny little gaps that kind of occur when you stretch out a song like that to, to fit a different beat. Also, when you do that, it, it also allows you to uh, spontaneously recompose, as I'll show you 
in a couple of seconds here. So what I have here is I've got my Avishai Cohen. It's um, it's already highlighted. Now if I play, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, hang on one second. Just gotta balance my camera really quickly. Sorry about that. So there we go. Get that going. So basically, uh, if I wanted to do that, I can take my keyboard and just start playing. And it's all laid out now because I've got it, because I sliced it to a MIDI track, I've got it all right here. You know, and it's all quarter notes, you know. So there is, you know, there is a, there is a, a, a benefit to really learning the fundamentals of counting and syncopation because you can do this. Not only can you do this, you can be able to replay it, spontaneous recompose it. Uh, but it not, it's not necessarily a uh, prerequisite for doing mashups. Now, let me just talk to you a second about the difference between mashups and arrangements uh, really quickly. Uh, now, a mashup is basically, it's like a DJ tool. You can take, uh, you know, one sound source, song, whatever, mash it up against a different sound, you know, you know, whether it be, you know, vocals or, you know, music, it just, it happens to fall together in a good way and, you know, people like it. Now, an arrangement is a little bit different because what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to figure out what key the songs are in and figure out how to get them into a key so that one, uh, 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 song is diatonic to the other and that comes with a lot of theory and and school and that's the difference between arrangements so when when you hear a song and it kind of sounds like uh, um, you know it sounds like a mashup but it's acoustically correct and it's syncopated correctly that might be more of an uh, an arrangement than a mashup. So you might might be careful because you might be stepping on somebody's toes. So just uh, a heads up. So bef you know once you know once we got that out of the way, let's get down to it. We've got the laid out right. So what we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna start playing my uh, Clyde, because he's a great drummer to keep time to, wonderful beat, and he said it was cool that I could use his beat, you know? And if you don't believe me, check out Copyright Criminals. He said it was cool. So I'm gonna play that right there. There we go, and we're just gonna go, and I'm gonna show you some of the things you can do with this.
See, so you can go all over the place with that. And that's just a small, tiny piece of the entire song. I mean, this guy goes all over the place with that, that, that little theme right there. That's just a tiny little piece of that song. You should really check it out because the guy is just on another planet with it. But again, that's Avishai Cohen, that's Pins and Kinzen, and uh, that's also uh, Clyde Stubblefield uh, from The Funky Drummer. The original Funky Drummer, by the way, you should check him out. Uh, it's a very, very uh, uh, cool cat to study. Um, but basically, that's it. I mean, if, you, if you're just looking to put songs together and experiment with music, which is a great way to get started, Ableton's great for that. It's very easy. There's a ton of tutorials there's stuff that you can uh, access while you're using the program so it's very cool in that way um, also if you if you've already got a little bit of music experience like you can count and you got a lot of rhythm and syncopation uh, Ableton will uh, accommodate that as well because you'll be able to um, basically hone out those rhythms and be able to uh, uh, do things like that with the spontaneous recomposition. So Ableton the great is a great program. It's very open. You can uh, tweak it. It's very, very user friendly. And it's also one of the uh, more inexpensive programs on the market. Um, but I'll, uh, if you, if you uh, really want to know about that, you can talk to me personally, send me an email, and I'll tell you all about it. That is... Uh, yeah, Chemical X, Chemical X Consulting. But anyway, um, that is Ableton. And um, I hope that answers the question. Um, if not, you can always send me an email and we can kind of break it down a little bit further. Um, but that'll pretty much do it for this one. Uh, send me a question. Put your you know questions or comments in the links below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. Uh, if I get some time, I'll do a tutorial. Uh, also, uh, uh, Chemical X Consulting. Uh, basically, uh, if you need anything, you have any questions, wondering about anything when it comes to pro audio or video or anything like that, hit me up. Give me an email. I'll let you know what the 411 is. All right. Take it easy, man. Peace.